Hey, what's up you badass motherfuckers? Wacky Weirdo here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about probably one of the worst games I've ever played, Kanan Lynch 2 Dog Days. Now you may be thinking, what the fuck? This game came out like eight years ago. Why are you just now talking about it? Well, that's because I never got around to playing this game the year it came out. It came out in 2010, which was probably one of the best years for game releases we've ever had. We had releases like Red Dead Redemption, Fallout New Vegas, Alan Wake, Mafia 2, Metro 2033, Splinter Cell Conviction, Rage, Bioshock 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Dead Rising 2, Battlefield Bad Company 2, Call of Duty Black Ops, and a bunch of other good game releases in 2010. So I really didn't have any time to focus on the shittier titles. And I remember reading reviews about this game back then, and people were saying how short it was, how uninteresting the story and characters were, and how bland and mediocre the gameplay was, and how it really wasn't worth the full purchase price. So I decided to put the game on the back burner, and I'd buy it when it got cheaper, but as the years went by, I just never got around to playing it. Until recently, I purchased a Square Enix Humble Bundle, I think sometime early last year. And it had a key for this game in it. And I forgot about it until recently when I started scrolling through old emails and I seen my Humble Bundle emails and there was a key for this game in there. And I was like, wow, I never installed this game. So I was like, fuck it. I'm getting tired of all these multiplayer games, these battle royale games. I just want to play a single player game that might be enjoyable. So I installed this game. And this was not a very enjoyable single player experience at all. This is probably one of the shortest games I've ever fucking played in my life. I beat this game in two and a half hours. And then I spent about 30 minutes on the arcade mode because I wanted to try it out. So I have a total of three hours in this game on Steam. That's it. Now think about that. This game sold for $60 back in 2010 when it first released. And it gives you three hours of story content, a shitty arcade mode, and a shitty multiplayer mode. Nobody played. So what the fuck was IO Interactive thinking? This is some EA level bullshit right here. Charging you $60 for a product that is nowhere near worth the amount of money you've put into it. Now luckily this game is probably only about 50 cent nowadays if you try to buy it. But I'm saying, back in the day when this game was $60, I felt bad for the people that purchased this game when it first released, day one. Because they were probably infuriated with the amount of content they got for that price tag. Now don't get me wrong, when I beat the game in two and a half hours, I was relieved. I was bored as shit, irritated the whole time I was playing this game. I was ready for it to end, and when it finally did, I was like, whew. Thank God, I did not want to put another hour into this piece of shit. Now, the reason the game is so short is because there's no story there. You got Kane and Lynch in Shanghai chasing after some bald Asian guy with his girlfriend. He ends up using her as a human shield. Kane shoots her in the chest, kills her. Come to find out, the girl Kane shot was the daughter of a Shanghai mob boss who put a hit out on Kane and Lynch's heads. So the whole time, you're running around trying to survive waves upon waves of enemies so that you can escape. And that's pretty much it. That's the plot right there. And there's no redeemable qualities about this game. The environments are ugly as shit. There's no places worth exploring. There's no, like, hidden Easter eggs or random objects you can find in the world like you would normally do in a single player experience. It's just run and gun, run and gun. And the shooting's not even really enjoyable. It's just your average generic third person shooter. And they try to make it gritty with like the camera angles and the discoloration on the screen. And when you get a headshot on somebody, it blurs it out to make it look like you completely mutilated their head when in reality, the bullet holes that you see in the NPC bodies when you shoot them is the same thing you see in their head. So I don't even know why they blur out the fucking headshots. And I just don't understand this game at all. I don't know why it was even created. Like IO Interactive, there's some talented dudes. 
They're the ones behind all the Hitman games, and I've enjoyed every single Hitman game that was released other than Absolution. I think Absolution was probably written by the same asshole who wrote Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days because that game was garbage, so was this one, and they just don't even deserve your time, man. I regret putting two, well, three hours of my life into this game. From now on, I'm going to start believing reviews. And even if I want to play something, if the majority of the reviews are negative, I ain't going to waste my time. Because if I would have listened to the reviews and never played this game, I'd have been good. And speaking of reviews, I decided to check Metacritic to see what the overall score for this game was. And you won't believe it. It's a fucking 63 out of 100. How? After all the negative reviews I've read over the years, how does this game have an average review score? This game is below average. In my opinion, it deserves like a 25 tops on Metacritic, but it has a fucking 63. Ride the Hell Retribution has a 17 out of 100, which is the perfect score for that piece of shit. But this game, if I had a top 5 worst games I've ever played, this would probably be one or two right below Ride to Hell Retribution. Ride to Hell Retribution is probably in the top three worst games I've ever played, so this would probably be number four, number five. I, I just don't see how any game critic, journalist, or consumer could give this a good score. Like, there's a bunch of positive scores on Metacritic for this game that are allowing it to get a 63 overall. And I'm just like, who the fuck, what kind of people are playing this game that are actually enjoying it? Who's enjoying this three hour shit fest? Definitely not me. Like I played the first Kane and Lynch back in 2007 when it came out and I actually enjoyed that game. Like it wasn't phenomenal or anything, but the game was a lot longer than the second one. Kane and Lynch were a little bit more interesting than they are in this one. The story was actually pretty cool compared to this one. Like I said, this one basically doesn't have a fucking story at all. But the first one, you know, you were a bank robber. You got to participate in some heist and shit. It wasn't as in-depth or enjoyable as GTA V's bank heist, but, you know, it was pretty cool. And I don't know how they went from... A cool premise like the first game and gave us this this pile of fucking dried up dingleberries but anyways I just had to say my two cents about this game now I'm gonna let you enjoy the ending of this game right here this is how the fucking game ends enjoy everybody Welcome to the end of the video. If you made it here, you kick ass and deserve a crisp high five. Now please consider hitting subscribe. It'll only take a second and it'll make me really happy.